going to talk now about the addition of chemotherapy to radiation in the definitive treatment of oropharynx cancer. Certainly, early stage oropharynx cancer patients can be cured with radiation alone. And it's somewhat controversial in our world when the benefit starts to arise from adding chemotherapy, when you need to do this. One reasonable standard out there in the world is stage 3 and stage 4 patients. Unlike with a lot of other cancers, stage 4 cancer in head and neck cancer does not imply that the cancer has spread or that it's incurable. We cure stage 4 cancer all the time. Stage 3 or 4 in oropharynx cancer means that the original spot where the cancer started is at least 4 centimeters in size or that the cancer has spread to lymph nodes. Chemotherapy is a poison. More specifically, it's a poison with a particular mechanism of action. It's a poison that poisons rapidly dividing cells. Most of the healthy, non-cancerous cells in your body don't divide at all. They stay put, they do a specific job, and they never divide and grow. In contrast, cancer cells are cancer because they divide out of control. And so chemotherapy is a poison that preferentially poisons these troublesome cancer cells. We mostly give the chemotherapy to cause the cells that are being radiated to be more likely to die, to weaken them for the radiation. However, chemotherapy does travel throughout the whole body. And so if one or two cancer cells have spread, we hope that the chemotherapy can also mop them up. So I apologize that I don't have a prettier picture of our infusion room. Uh, I meant to get one, and today uh, time got away from me a little bit. But let's just talk about what a chemo visit looks like. Our infusion room is filled with lazy boy chairs. Um, there are some by the window with a nice view. There are some private uh, rooms for patients with longer infusions. And all across the country, infusion rooms look pretty similar in that they're environments where a nurse has easy line of sight to all of her patients, um, and uh, they're designed for comfort. So you're brought to this lazy boy chair. After the doctor's visit, you're sat down. The nurse will start by putting an IV in if you don't have one already that day. And then he or she will start by giving you medicines to protect you. Most importantly are the medicines to protect your stomach from nausea, but also there might be uh, medicines to protect other organs such as your kidney. Once all of these safety protective comfort medicines are given, the chemotherapy itself is dripped in. Ten years ago, the most common side effect of chemotherapy infusion was nausea and vomiting. Um, you might have seen it in the 80s movies, patients bent over vomiting all the time. Our chemotherapy infusion room looks very different now. Now we don't give people a bucket on the way in, we need them to mop the floors. Uh, in contrast, you can see people eating a sandwich right through chemo these days, mostly because the anti-nausea medicines are most effective. The most common side effect while chemotherapy is being infused is now boredom. We try to combat that with things to do. We have televisions and DVD players. Most chemotherapy infusion rooms uh, now have Wi-Fi. Um, and in most, there is space uh, for loved ones to sit with you. The infusion can take anywhere from half an hour to several hours with the regimens typically used in head and neck cancer. Once the infusion is done, you might receive more protective medicines depending on the chemotherapy used. The IV is taken out and you can go home. How do we know the chemotherapy helps? This is a very famous meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is when you take a bunch of trials that have studied the same thing, and you put them together to sort of make a mega combined trial. This meta-analysis called MOC-NC showed us that giving chemotherapy after whatever you did to cure people, so after the radiation or after the surgery, really didn't create a lot of benefit. If you gave the chemotherapy before, um, called induction in our world, the benefits started to creep up. But the greatest benefit in this analysis was when patients were given their chemotherapy at the same time as the radiation, the concomitant arm at the top. The most standard regimen is a big dose of a drug called cisplatin given every three weeks. So this is just one infusion. You sit down once, the next one happens three weeks later, the next one happens three weeks after that. 
a total of three infusions. The great advantage of high-dose cisplatin is that there are several phase three clinical trials that prove that it improves the cure rate compared to radiation therapy alone. The major disadvantage is that it has a high rate of side effects, perhaps the worst of any chemotherapy regimen that I use. Like my, many chemotherapy agents, it causes hair loss. You do get your hair back after the um, treatment is completed. It causes nausea and vomiting. Uh, five or ten years ago, this was the chemotherapy regimen with one of the highest rates of nausea and vomiting. It's actually gotten a lot better um, with new uh, anti-nausea medicines that we're going to talk a bit about. Any chemotherapy given with radiation therapy can increase the radiation side effects, such as sore mouth. Like any chemotherapy, cisplatin can lower your blood counts. When the white cell count goes low, that increases the risk of infection, including severe infections. When the red cell count goes down, that's called anemia. It can cause you to be tired and short of breath. High-dose cisplatin can cause a high-frequency hearing loss. Um, by high frequency, we mean the sounds up here, not so much the sounds down here. It can also cause something that doctors call tinnitus, which is a ringing in the ears. Cisplatin can cause nerve damage. Most commonly, it's sensory nerves, meaning the nerves that you feel with. So in the tips of fingers and toes, people will feel a numb, tingling feeling. Um, and if you keep giving the medicine, once that starts, it can be, become painful and even permanently painful. Cisplatin can also cause weird uh, nerve damages. Finally, cisplatin has a risk of kidney damage. All of that said, cisplatin in 2014 is actually a different drug than cisplatin was in 2004. Not because the cisplatin itself has changed, but because the su supportive care has gotten much better. We've seen dramatic, dramatic improvements in our nausea control with this chemotherapy drug. Uh, there are certain key classes of agents that are given before chemotherapy to protect patients. We give steroids, most commonly one called dexamethasone. We give one of a drug in the class called 5-HT3 antagonists. The most famous ones are Zofran and Aloxy. And there's a very new medicine called uh, Fosaprepidant, um, or in its oral form, amend, that also improves uh, vomiting control. Those are the medicines we give before the chemo for prevention. Many doctors, including myself, will continue this prevention for several days after chemotherapy, typically for three to six days. Um, we'll give people a lower dose of steroids to help prevent nausea. And finally, we give powerful as-needed medicines to be used at home. The most famous ones are Zofran and Compazine. Not on my slide, uh, but one piece of alternative medicine that I found very, very helpful uh, is ginger. Um, many of my patients have tried it and found it helpful. In preventing kidney damage, we give fluid both before and after the chemotherapy to try to flush the kidneys out. And there's a medicine called mannitol that's very interesting. Mannitol is a diuretic, meaning a medicine that makes you pee. And it's been controversial whether it actually helps um, protect the kidneys against cisplatin damage, with some studies saying yes and some studies uh, saying no. Um, we used, um, there's been a drug shortage of mannitol in the last two years, and we used that as a kind of quasi-experiment um, at our institution to look at whether the mannitol actually helps or not. Um, and in a paper uh, that we submitted about a month ago, um, and which will, if we're lucky, come to print soon, um, we showed that it actually did seem to matter. As best I'm aware, uh, mannitol is still on fairly severe shortage in the United States um, with no signs uh, of improvement coming. Um, when it does become available, uh, I plan to resume its use in my practice because uh, our data indicates it might help. So Dr. Geiger uh, spoke a little bit about uh, nerve stabilizing agents um, such as Neurontin. Um, these medicines uh, most traditionally are used once patients already have nerve damage. I'm very intrigued about the idea of using it to prevent pain. Certainly when patients get uh, painful nerve damage from cisplatin, Neurontin uh, and its cousin uh, pregabalin um, can be very, very helpful. 
As far as blood counts go, there's not a lot we can do about the white blood cell count. Um, the medicines that bring white cell count uh, up have been shown to not be safe together with radiation. But we do check the counts very, very carefully. And we might adjust the dose or even skip a dose if the white count goes too low. In the past, as little as 10 years ago, we tried very hard to avoid blood transfusions um, when we could because there were concerns about infection from blood. The blood supply now, nowadays is extremely uh, safe, and so I don't hesitate about blood transfusions. When the red cell count becomes low and patients become anemic, a blood transfusion can do a world of good for improving the patient's energy and breathing. So I've shared with you all the problems with cisplatin. A natural question at this might point might be, is there something else? There's nothing else that has as many positive studies behind it as cisplatin does. But there are other things that may help just as much. It just hasn't been as well proven. The one with the most advanced data is a drug called cetuximab. Cetuximab is famous for being the Martha Stewart drug. Um, I'll leave that story uh, for another day, um, but I'll say here that cetuximab is not traditional chemotherapy. Cetuximab is not a poison. Um, it doesn't cause nausea. It doesn't cause vomiting. It doesn't cause hair loss. It's actually fairly favorable um, for side effects. Cetuximab is an antibody. That's a special kind of protein, um, similar to the type that your immune system uh, uses to fight infections. Um, when it does have side effects, its most common side effect is an acne-like rash. That rash is treatable and does go away when you stop the medicine. In the southeast of the United States and nowhere else in the known universe, um, there's also a high rate of allergic reactions uh, to this medicine. Um, that does affect my population in North Carolina, uh, but is rather rare um, in places like Philadelphia where Dr. Geiger practices. Here is a quick cartoon that I drew out of cetuximab's mechanism of action. Normally, there's a receptor on the surface of cancer cells called the epidermal growth factor receptor. And a variety uh, of ligands, uh, a variety of molecules can bind it um, that are collectively called epidermal growth factors. And normally, um, it should only signal downstream if one of those binds. By signaling downstream, I mean the communication within the cancer cell. Within the cancer cell, there's kind of a game of telephone where EGFR signals to something called RAS, which signals to RAF, which signals to MEC, which signals to ERK, which signals to the nucleus of the cell and tells it to grow and divide. And so one way that cetuximab works is that it binds to this receptor and stops the signaling. That's sort of the canonical or t standard textbook way that cetuximab works. My opinion is that there are probably other mechanisms that are poorly characterized that may matter more. Leading amongst these is something called ADCC, uh, which I will uh, briefly summarize as the idea that cetuximab may recruit the immune system to help kill the cancer cells. And this mechanism, as well as several others, uh, may be uh, even more important than the uh, traditional mechanism. The key point here, though, um, for a cancer patient or their loved one is that it's not chemo and doesn't have those chemo side effects. Does it work? There's only been one large randomized phase three study comparing radiation alone to radiation plus cetuximab. And here's the survival data from that trial. It was very positive. Cetuximab is less used than cisplatin despite its dramatically better uh, toxicity because of uh, several controversial points um, from this trial that I'm not getting, going to get into, but also because it's just one trial. It hasn't been fully replicated in trial after trial the way uh, cisplatin has. I will note that in addition to cetuximab, there are several other uh, regimens that are reasonable um, and could be considered for select patients. Like cetuximab, none of these have been compared head-to-head -to, -head to each other. We don't know if one might be better, if one might be worse. Um, we just know that the cisplatin has been the best studied. Next best studied uh, is cetuximab, um, and these other regimens um, have quite a bit less data behind them. If there are any questions, I'd be uh, happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'm going to bid you good night.
Well, thank you for um, attending the webinar. Uh, I hope this has been useful and would be happy to answer uh, further questions online uh, on the forums as they should come up. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our Gracecast, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace, find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info. And that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support. 